you have kids writing a, a, uh, a story, a, a scary story. And so all the kids write a scary story. And then you're, you're a teacher, you're reading through them, and you go, you know what? The kids totally didn't get it. They just did not understand what I was after. But look at this one. Look at this opening sentence in this scary story. Oh, this is just what I'm after. And so you do a critique session with Billy's writing where you look at that and you say, what is it about this first sentence? Isn't this a beautiful first sentence? What is it? And the kids will say, well, Bill is a good writer. You say, no, I'm not letting you off the hook. What are the qualities of this first sentence that make it so strong? And then kids, start, you start brainstorming, you start realizing, you start describing the criteria, and then you try to name the qualities that make that first sentence so strong. Because the idea is once we can name it, now we can do it ourselves. And so, okay, let's try again tonight. And let's make sure that the first sentence is really beautiful in this, and here's these ways to be thinking about it. So it's a kind of a counterpoint to rubrics of really pushing examples of student work. So that's something that we're trying to get better at and I think really struggling with, yeah. What's the basis for the grade, so to speak, or the, the, the comparisons? That it looks great, that's really great, but if the content isn't there, you know, what's the, the trade off of the looks and the content? Exactly. So we call this the, um, the, the balance between uh, style, style and substance. substance. So we struggle with it. Um, that's sort of one of the, for me, that's sort of one of these endlessly interesting conversations that we're constantly having as a faculty is, okay, well, how much is it, is it strong enough on the content? Is it strong enough on the design sense? Because part of what we're doing is what you see the last day when the kids are presenting all this work Obviously, to, you're not going to, I mean, just realistically, you're going to go for a couple hours, you're going to see all this work, you're not going to sit down and like read hours and hours of every kid's detailed work, but that's not the only opportunity. This, the end product presentation is not the only time when you're going to look at this. So along the way, the teacher's looking at, at the, is, is this a well-written piece? Is the math accurate? There's, so there's, there's multiple check-ins, and one of them is the public display of student work. And I just think that too often, we do the other parts, and we never do the public display of student work. And pub the public display is not the time to measure every single aspect of the project, but I think it's, a, it's the most motivating piece. All the other things along the way, frankly, are not that exciting for kids, but, oh, and also, you're going to present this stuff publicly, and we're going to have these you know, uh, architects here, and they're going to be looking at your work. That, that uh, is, I think, a very uh, energizing and engaging hook for kids. How do you deal with the graduation requirements and the requirements for entry into some of the yeah. more named schools? Rather? Right. So, um, so one thing that we realized early, we have decided that getting kids into college and doing well once they get there, that's kind of what we're trying to do. And people could quibble with that and say, not everybody in society needs to be <coughs> go to college. We need plumbers too, um, which I agree with. Um, but our basic thesis is um, we're, all the kids are better served if we assume that they're all going to college and we treat them as such. And if at the end of their senior year they say, actually, I want to do this other thing, that's really fantastic. But we think that's better than deciding when you're 14, you know what, frankly, Billy, you're not really college material, so we're going to put you on this other path over here. We just think that if we could get to a place in society where that was not based on socioeconomic status and based on the, the, parent, the education level of the kid's parents, which we know, the, of the mother in particular, we know is so much a predictor of that kind of decision, then I think maybe I wouldn't feel this way. But given the way the society we live in, I really think it's important that all the kids are on this college track. So, okay, we're over there doing this wacky stuff. We're doing projects, we're making things, we're sort of doing, avoiding um, traditional schools in many ways. And yet at the end of the day, we want them to go to college. So then I was, we had a conference at High Tech High for charter schools around San Diego. And it was with, with the guy from UC and, and me were the two kind of co-speakers. And it was about how to have UC approved courses when you have an alternative um, curriculum. And this guy, interesting, I'm now here publicly with this guy from UC and I said, do I actually really describe what we did? And so I said, being me, I probably figured, I just went ahead and said what we did. And, and then some of the other schools said, well, you know, that's great, you had to do that early, but now you have kids and they're going to Berkeley and they're going to UCLA and they're going to Stanford, they're going to all these places. Don't you think you have an obligation to 
actually go back to UC and say, look, here's what we're really doing, you know, and this way you'll pave the way for the rest of us so they can understand. And so I was sitting there feeling very guilty, thinking, you know, I'm not doing my part for the world. I need to rewrite all these course descriptions. And this guy said, you know, there's only so many hours in the day. I would suggest you do it the way Ben says it. So, so we basically, the short answer is, we, our, our, our graduation requirements actually are the UC requirements. We say, you, you, no one graduates from our schools unless they do those things. Four years of math, four years of English, four years of, we just do all that stuff, which I think is actually healthy in some ways. In fact, we take it one step further. We say, in your senior year, you'll be taking math and English and science. So you don't say, oh, well, because I took algebra one in eighth grade, now I don't need to take math. You know, everyone needs to have math every year. Everyone needs to have science every year. Everyone needs to have English every year. So we just, that's kind of how we do it. So we just, we're, we're balancing the world as it is and the world as we want it to be. And we're just sort of trying to, to you know, we're trying to be in that sort of spot where we're, we feel like we're not lying, but at the same time, we're not exactly saying exactly, we're to exactly say what we're doing. So we're just trying to kind of balance that. We finished filming a couple days ago and then now we're just gonna edit, add the sound effects, speed it up, and make the clips make sense with each other pretty much. So this is what we have so far. So we should have like a tunnel vision kind of thing? Yeah. And then this part has text, like, since it's like a trailer, it has like the summer and things like that, you know? last year and there's, there's also another magazine which is the other class so uh, we wanted to make it dramatic since it's automatic you know yeah. getting to work with programs like this you know getting to do things I like doing like filming and editing my other half of the senior project is making an album with another friend of mine just doing things that I like doing while learning the things that I'm supposed to be learning. Ah, Kali. 